Fay Lewand, New Zealand's trusted internal conflict resolution expert, was born in the heart of the Middle East in the small Mediterranean country of Lebanon, just a few years before the Lebanese Civil War of 1975. The Middle East, as you know, is a very conflicted part of the world. Fay was born into this troubled environment, and even though Fay and her family left the area of conflict early on, she took the patterns of internal conflict with her as she moved from country to country, from one part of the world to the other. We were some of the lucky ones. We got out early, and we were unaffected by the war. Were things she heard all the time while growing up, so she didn't question it. That's what she kept telling herself and willing herself to believe. Growing up, I knew there was so much to be grateful for, yet I wasn't able to feel grateful. It was really frustrating. I wasn't able to access any of those positive internal states that come with gratitude. There was a deep disconnect. One of the countries Faye lived in as an adult was the exotic island of Curaçao in the Dutch Caribbean. She moved there for a teaching position at one of the top international schools on the island back in the early 2000s. I was living where other people come to vacation. It was a chapter of my life that was full of fun and adventure and friendship and mirth. Life was a party and I loved each and every single moment of it. In 2006, Faye became an aunt for the very first time to a gorgeous nephew in Lebanon. She planned a trip to Lebanon over the summer vacation to meet him and to be with the family. She hadn't spent any considerable amount of time in Lebanon since she was a child. It was a beautiful family reunion. I fell in love. I fell in love with my nephew. I fell in love with Lebanon. I fell in love with the warm and welcoming lifestyle of the Lebanese. I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to leave. I started planning a return to live and work in the country uh, where I was born. I loved it so much. Early during her stay in Lebanon, Faye had planned a little side trip to Istanbul, Turkey, for four days and then should have returned to Lebanon for another four weeks of vacation. So she packed for the four days. I had a really early morning flight and I didn't want to wake up anyone from the family. So I didn't say, any, I didn't say goodbye to anyone. I didn't kiss anyone goodbye. Uh, my thinking was I'd be back in a few days time. I never made it back to Lebanon that summer. The Israeli invasion of Lebanon of 2006 happened while Faye was on her short getaway to Istanbul. Airstrikes were everywhere. The airport shut down. There was no way of getting back in. All options, land, air, and sea, failed. She was desperate to go back home. She couldn't fathom the idea of not saying goodbye to the family. My heart broke with sadness and with loss. I was forced out and away by chaos and conflict. The emotional overwhelm had been a repeating pattern throughout Faye's childhood. With no way to get back home to her family, she ended up buying a new one-way ticket from Istanbul, back to her base of Curaçao. She returned with no luggage, no house key, and no car key. Everything was left behind in Lebanon. I was not okay. I was anxious and sick with worry all the time. It was hard to sleep. Faye couldn't put the news or her phone down. She was attached to both 24-7. Every morning, she'd wake up with a sense of dread, a tightness in the chest, pressure in the head, and tension throughout the body. It was starting to affect other areas of life. I didn't know how not to be okay. I also didn't know that it's okay not to be okay. And so every day was a struggle. Every day I'd get up, I'd put on my best outfits, I'd put on a smile, and I'd tell anybody who asked that I was feeling great. I was smiling on the outside while bleeding on the inside. And I think of all the internal conflicts going on at the time, that was probably the most painful and the most damaging for me. She had pounding headaches on most days and was popping Advil pills every couple of hours just to make it through the day. Stomach always in knots, non-stop nausea and vertigo, 
It felt like her world was spinning out of control. She developed chronic back pain, a nasty respiratory infection, and lost her voice for days. Rapid weight loss, pale skin and eyeballs popping out of their sockets. She had digestive problems and her tummy was constantly sore and bloated. Her skin was playing up. I constantly felt uncomfortable in my body and in myself. Oversleeping but still waking up tired every single day. No matter how many hours of sleep she got, she felt tired all the time, drained and depleted. She used caffeine to get her day going, sugar to keep her day going, and wine to wind down at the end of the day. The chatter inside the mind was constant, all sorts of crazy thoughts swirling about non-stop. Critical, judgmental, negative self-talk. I was constantly comparing myself to others, doubting myself and overthinking every little detail of uh, my life. It felt like I was living in the past, that, ruminating on every little thing that, have, that had happened since the beginning of time. I wanted to switch it off. I really wanted to switch it off. It was exhausting, but I couldn't. I just didn't know how. I wanted it to stop, I wanted it to, I wanted to move forward, but I felt stuck and I felt blocked. As time went on, things got worse, not better. I remember a really scary time one morning on my way to work where I passed out at the wheel of the car and I totally lost control of the car. And when I came to, I had absolutely no idea what had happened. It was absolutely petrifying. I had no idea, no explanation for what had happened. And so I hid it from everyone around me. When she eventually made it to the doctors, she was convinced that there was some neurological damage that was creating the fainting spells, the crippling vertigo and the host of health ailments she had been experiencing. Test after test came back negative. I wasn't relieved at all. I wasn't. If the tests were negative and showing that there's nothing wrong, then why was I constantly feeling unwell? Why wasn't I feeling well and healthy? For the first time in her life, she stopped to consider what it means to be well, really well and healthy. The diagnosis was this, PTSD plus depression. She resisted the diagnosis. How could I be depressed? <laughs> People like me don't get depressed. I'm positive, I'm optimistic, I'm cheerful. I can't be depressed. And PTSD, what's PTSD? I had never ever heard of PTSD before. And just like the earlier diagnosis, the, the, the depression diagnosis, I completely dismissed that one too, because nothing traumatic has ever happened to me before. <laughs> Faye was skeptical of both diagnoses and the prescribed treatments prescription medication and talk therapy. She refused the medication from the get-go. The doctor urged Faye to reconsider because of risks of long-term imbalance of serotonin and other hormones to the brain. What will you do? How do you plan to get better? He asked with a genuinely caring tone. I'm going to eat well, I'm going to exercise, manage my stress, and have positive thoughts. That surprised her as much as it surprised the doctor. Being a party girl at the time and living the party life, Faye had no idea about the mind-body connection. So in that moment, I intuitively knew that health and well-being were not just about the physical. That what we think, how we eat, how we feel, and how we live, they all impact health and well-being. Now this seems so obvious to me now, but back then I was, I had no idea, I was absolutely clueless. Without knowing, I knew what I needed uh, to do. I wanted to get better, and I wanted to do that on my own terms. I knew I had it in me. Faye knew that she wanted to do this in a way that was natural, in a way that didn't involve medication and its nasty side effects. She wanted a solution that got to the root cause of the issue and didn't involve repeatedly talking about the problem. A 
afraid of the non-conventional approach wouldn't work for her, and afraid that the medical establishment might be right about making things worse if she didn't go on medication. Faye was determined. She wanted more for herself, and more for her life. However, she had no idea how to get started. I didn't have any mentors or any guides to show me the way. What I wanted more than anything else was a structured, step-by-step -step approach to my problem. But there wasn't one. Faye was left to figure it for herself. There was no one there to guide me, to hold my hand, to save me from making mistakes, to encourage and support me along the way. Faye's plan to exercise, eat well, manage stress, and have positive thoughts was working. There were some noticeable improvements. Fainting spells stopped, and so did the vertigo. Faye's sleep was better, and her mood was improving. She was learning about and applying traditional techniques of self-care and stress management, such as diaphragmatic breathing, Epsom salt baths, walks in nature, journaling, gentle exercise, adaptogens, and adrenal tonics. But Faye was still anxious a lot of the time. She was unable to really relax. And she was still feeling unhappy, unfulfilled, and out of balance. So around the time I turned 40, my life caught up with me in a very real way. Um, at this point, I was living in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, and I was doing some teacher training at one of the local universities there. And so there I was, a 40-year-old uh, unmarried Arab woman living in the Arab world, no prospects, no kids, a career in limbo, um, and constantly feeling exhausted, constantly feeling uh, tired. I felt that there was something seriously wrong with me, like seriously wrong with me. Otherwise, my life would be on track like everyone else's, right? That, that was my thinking. It's like constantly in comparison mode, and this was well before Instagram. <laughs> It was about that time that Faye heard about the subconscious mind and a form of therapy to access the mind and reprogram outdated and unwanted patterns of behavior. Faye immediately booked herself in for a session. During the very first session, the therapist instructed her subconscious mind to go back to the root cause of the struggles she was currently experiencing in her life. So my mind went back to a time when I was so 35 years or earlier when I was five years old and we were all crammed in the backseat of, of, of a car and we were fleeing the war zone. So there were snipers overhead and there were bombs falling in the distance and in an attempt to keep us children safe, my mom just pushed our heads down below the seats and I was petrified. I couldn't breathe and I went into panic, uh, into panic mode. So I left that session, that first session, thinking this was like total and utter uh, BS. Because I was so identified with the earlier story, you know that story, the one that said, the one that I was running on autopilot, the one that said, well, you know, nothing uh, traumatic ever happened to me, we're one of the lucky ones, uh, we got out early. That was the story I was running on autopilot. I was so identified with that story that I totally and utterly dismissed what my mind had showed me as being the real reason behind the issues in my life around the time that I turned 40. Because my thinking was, well, how could something that happened when I was five years old, such a long time ago, have any impact on what was going on in my life right now? I mean, how could it not, right? <laughs> Faye soon realized that there's no way that what happened in the past wasn't affecting what was happening in the present. It was becoming clear to Faye that she had no conscious awareness of the earlier stresses in her life and how those had affected her body, nervous system and her entire life. She had carried around all those old feelings of fear, stress and worry her entire life, even though she wasn't conscious of it. Her nervous system definitely understood overwhelm, and her body kept score of it.
After the initial skepticism faded, Faye went on to do a lot more of the internal work. She delved deep into yoga and yoga philosophy, meditation and mindfulness, coaching and clinical hypnotherapy, neuroscience and coaching, breathwork and relaxation, the mind-body connection, and all about the powerful human mind. This internal journey led Faye to many profound and life-transforming realizations. There's no doubt in my mind, absolutely no doubt whatsoever, that what, what happens on the inside is 100% responsible for what happens on the outside. When the inside is overwhelmed, the outside cannot be calm. When there's conflict and worry on the inside, there can't be calm and fulfillment on the outside. Conflict and calm cannot coexist. So I came to realize that we all have internal struggles that um, keep us from living our full potential. It's not the external environment that influences our quality of life. It's the internal reality. It became obvious to me that while I had left the environment of trouble and conflict behind at an early age, I took those internal patterns with me throughout my life. And it's always the internal patterns that influence the direction of our lives. We all experience internal conflicts, which in turn stress us out, tire us out, wear us down, bring us down or make us feel anxious. You don't need to be born in a battlefield to have internal struggles, internal conflicts that get in the way of your full potential. Faye described the healing that followed as a deep cleansing of body, mind and self. A purging and release of all the old, outdated, unresolved internal conflicts that had robbed her of her joy, health and vitality. And for the very first time I was feeling peaceful and relaxed. I was feeling happy and healthy, calm and confident. I was enjoying life once again, or maybe for the very first time. And this time I wasn't pretending that I was, it was great. <laughs> The chronic headaches, the back pain, PTSD, anxiety attacks, depression, chronic fatigue, compromised immunity and skin issues, all gone. All symptoms naturally disappeared without any medication or any of the nasty side effects that come with prescription drugs. My symptoms were gone and they were gone because I managed to get to the root cause of the problem and to resolve that internally. It was in that moment that Faye came to realize what she now teaches and preaches. Stress is not the problem. Stress, anxiety, fatigue, depression, they're not the problem. And when you just treat the stress like I had been for years, the underlying cause, it persists and it grows and it escalates until eventually it presents itself in an undeniable moment of crisis. Resolving those internal conflicts resolved the stress and all the other chronic conditions that are associated with stress. Life has never been the same since. <laughs> Faye recently turned 50 and she can easily say that life has never been better. She lives life on her own terms and she is the architect of her own life. She is happy to call New Zealand home and to live in one of the most beautiful, peaceful and progressive countries in the world. I'm in a wonderful, happy, fulfilling marriage with the man of my dreams. I feel better in myself and in my own skin than I have in my whole entire life. I have work that I care about, that I believe in, and that I'm passionate about. And a sense of purpose and a sense of mission that I feel makes a real difference in the lives of others. As of today, Faye has mentored countless professionals across numerous industries 
to resolve their internal conflicts and to release what is stressing them out, tiring them out and bringing them down. She has also been invited to speak at workplaces, wellness centers, schools, universities, yoga studios and NGOs in several countries and several continents around the world and has supported hundreds of busy professionals to feel calmer, happier and more fulfilled. There's nothing special about me other than applying what I had learned since that initial diagnosis in 2006, about 14 years ago. It's not about happy endings, it's about lessons learned. After 14 years, countless hours, over $165,000 worth of training, certification and mentoring, along with extensive research into approaches of well-being, Faye pulled and pieced together from each of these systems and applied them in her own healing journey. She coded everything that worked for her into a proprietary system that takes busy professionals from conflict to calm, from internal conflict to full potential. My system is now able to do for others what I needed someone to do for me after my initial diagnosis in 2006. I'm able to provide the system, the support, and the sense of community that I so desperately needed when I was searching for a solution. There's no better feeling um, in the world. I feel like I'm making a difference. I feel like every day matters. I feel like I'm living up to my potential. And it kind of feels like the party has come to the party girl. <laughs> Change and transformation can be yours as well. If this story resonates in any way, then reach out and find out how you can go from internal conflict to full potential with the right systems, support and sense of community. It's time for you to write your happy ending too.